Tonight we'll be in our fifth installment in the Epistle to the Ephesians. Now this is foundational teaching, as you understand. Foundational doesn't mean simplistic. Sometimes people think it does. There's a couple of senses in which foundations can be viewed. One is the foundations of the doctrine mentioned in Hebrews 6. Those are elementary and rudimentary. I want to read them to refresh your mind to them that A lot of people don't know anything about these things. <laughs> these are the ABCs here. Hebrews 6, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again. Now here they are. The foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith toward God of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands, and of the res and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. <clears throat> if you have to go over those things all the time, you got a major problem. That's one sense of the word foundations. And I would venture to say that in most churches, there's hardly any understanding at all of those things that I just mentioned. They're pretty well areas of ignorance, which throws the whole matter of salvation into question. Now, we're not prepared to say people like that aren't saved, but neither are we prepared to say they are. We just don't know. Because salvation is based on those things. So if a person doesn't know anything about them, well, it's a sad state. Why? Because they're unable to grow. I want to make this pretty plain. When you go on to perfection, it's because you've got these foundations pretty firm. You can't go on to perfection. You cannot grow. You cannot mature if these things back here are cloudy Amen. that I just read. Amen. So now what we're talking about in Ephesians, foundations, this is of a different order. This is not the foundations of the doctrine. This is the foundation of the purpose that's delineated in the doctrine now, Paul received evidence of the Ephesians' commitment to the Lord and to his people. Of course, he labored among them for two to three years. He knew them very well, and a report came to him that even after he was, wasn't there anymore, they, they continued to advance. He heard of their faith in Christ and love toward the saints. So now he launches into a commentary of the work of God in Christ Jesus. He's been looking for people like this mm -hmm. so he can speak these things. Yeah, amen. As a young man, I preached for a considerable time before I was able to tell what I'd seen. I was a bunch of old, among a bunch of old timers that hadn't seen anything. Trouble was, I knew it and they didn't. But there came a time when I was able to speak about them. Then, of course, I grew into them myself. I was able to do it. So Paul's been looking for people like this because he knows what he's talking about, what he's going to talk about in his epistle. If you want to achieve any type of advancement in Christ Jesus, you're going to have to know these things. 
everything else. Uh, I mean, this doesn't mean you won't have faith. It doesn't mean you don't love the brethren. But you're, it's your way down there low. Not deep. Childlike. You're closer to child than you are to adult. There's a lot of people that are really fervent, and but they're like a child playing with a toy, you know. <laughs> what they're fervent about is doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. And why? Because the things we're going to talk about, they don't know. Paul knows that stability and consistency being able to stand and be and always being able to stand comes from comprehending with all saints what is the height and length and depth and breadth and to be and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge how's that for oxymoron that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God so that's what he's going to aid them in, is this is comprehending the height and length and depth. We're going to talk tonight about predestination. A lot of people talk about predestination, don't very, really know very little about it. And you don't want to make a practice of talking a lot about something you don't know a lot about. Amen. Because it will, well, it's just not good. Now, Kurt. Carefully note, when Paul digs in here and starts to open this up, he's not talking about what the world, what the Lord can do for the world. Mm -hmm. Although there is something there. He does have something for the world to bring them to Christ. That's not what he's talking about here. Carefully note that. He's not, he doesn't begin to open up what he can do for suffering people. That's not what he opens up. It's not that it's wrong to talk about those things. It's just that to ground people, that's not the stuff that grounds them. He doesn't tell them how he can save sinners or that they ought to save sinners. That's not what he, that's not what he talks about. The crucifying of the flesh and the mortifying of the deeds of the body, he'll talk about that later, but that's not what he talks about now. If you talk about crucifying the flesh and mortifying the deeds of the body as those were the foundations, you're, all, you're off base. I'm sorry. Those aren't the foundations. Those are things you do because of the foundations. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. so you could, as when you emphasize what people ought to do, you're not talking about foundations. Yeah. Foundations are always about what God has and is doing. Amen. And that's what people have to know before they can achieve any kind of growth in the other areas. Amen. When it comes to being personally acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, others are not the ultimate point. God is the ultimate point. God himself now he's going to talk about what God did through Christ, but God himself is the ultimate thing he's commenting about. And he brings Christ into it because Christ clarifies God. Mm -hmm. He shows us the Father. Why? Because no man knows who the Father is except the Son. Amen. It's a subtle distinction, but it's necessary to know. We're dealing with here with the thrust or emphasis of doctrine. Now, this is a very difficult thing for modern Christians to endure. They uh, have a hard time with this. So little is really said about what God has and is doing in redemption. He's just not brought up very much. Writings such as those of Paul are considered well beyond the reach of the average Christian. That's just, frankly, that's how they're considered. Too deep. But they're not too deep. Amen. They're deep, but not too deep. And ignorance of what Paul taught 
mandates and ignorance about salvation because he taught things about salvation nobody else taught. Mm -hmm. Amen. It took me quite a while to see this because what I was hearing when I was being taught and this sort of thing, this isn't how things were slanted. Mm -hmm. It was more slanted toward duty. I actually was under a system of law and I didn't know it. Because what men did, that was the most important thing. What men do is important, but it's not the most important thing. Getting the people busy with institutional concerns, that's fundamental now. Let's keep the organization going. Let's do what we can to make the churches, by the church, they mean the, that one right there, to make it successful. Let's do that. Yet in this epistle, You'll not be given the faintest idea how the church at Ephesus was doing on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> you'll, not, you'll not receive any idea what they did or what their community involvement was or things that are so important in the world today, how they helped their neighbors. Or, nothing like that's in here yeah. or in any other epistle. So I've got to ask, why do people talk so much about this kind of stuff? Yeah, that's right. This is the highest day of the year when the church goes out and picks up the twigs out of the widow's yards, yeah. you know. And, well, I don't deprecate that kind of work, but let the children do that. Yeah. It's a good work for them to do. <laughs> Paul throws himself into an extensive commentary on what God has done in the salvation of the Ephesians and how he has proceeded and quite frankly is very edifying. Now he's already written to them that he's, he's blessed them with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places and he chose them in Christ Jesus. So that pretty much <laughs> throws the spotlight on God. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. Now he's going to explain why he's done this. Mm -hmm. Why did he bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places? And why did he choose us in Christ before the foundation of the world? Why did he do that? Mm -hmm. Well, the shallow thinker will say, because he loved us. Uh -huh. That's not what he's going to say. That's right. His love was involved for God so loved. I understand that, but he's, he's deeper. He's at the foundational See, God's righteousness trumps his love. Amen. You really got to see that. Uh -huh. yes. God, God will not express his love unless it's righteous. So whether he loves or not really isn't even the question. Yes, That's not even the question. Uh -huh. God is love. Yes. So how could he who is love not love? That's a dumb question to even ask. And the emphasis is more absurd still. Mm -hmm. The issue is whether it's toward you or not. Uh -huh. That's the issue. And he's going to, yeah, yeah. He's going to say it is. We're going to tell you why. Uh -huh. Why it is. So here's our text. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. <laughs> if that wasn't in the Bible, some people would object to it. It's just the words themselves, but it's in there. Having. You want to, you're going to fasten on that word as we get into this. Having, that is, he blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Having that is if something took place before either one of those things took place, something else took place. And that's what he's going to that's what he's going to expound. The phrase having predestinated us, all of the versions are pretty consistent in how they present it, so evidently even the linguists couldn't mess this up. One version reads, He he predestined us, that's the New American Standard. He destined us. That's a new revised standard. He foreordained us. That's the American Standard Version. We were designed before by him. That's basic Bible English. 
He decided in advance. That's the Jewish Bible. Having marked us out beforehand as Darby, because of his love, he'd already decided. That's the Good News Bible. According as he had previously chosen us, Murdoch, God decided in advance to Net Bible. His unchanging plan has always been Living Bible. God planned long ago. International English Bible. Having predefined us, the Apostolic Bible. God was kind and decided that Christ would choose us. New Century Bible. God has already decided. Good News Bible. Long ago he decided. Message Bible. He foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us. Amplified. See, so it's just pretty... <laughs> Everybody pretty well agrees with what the Bible, what the text says. Because before you can proceed any further, you do have to know what it says. <laughs> the word now from which predestinated is translated has the following meaning, and it's to understand this. This doesn't. You can't build doctrine on a lexicon or a dictionary, but this is just interesting to notice. Predetermine or decide beforehand to foreordained, decreeing from eternity, appoint beforehand. That's Thayer's Greek lexicon. Decide on beforehand, determine in advance. That's Freiburg. Decide from the beginning or beforehand, predestined, set apart from the beginning or beforehand. That's the UBS lexicon. To come to a decision beforehand, to decide beforehand, to determine ahead of time, to decide upon ahead of time. Lua Nida lexicon. In the English language, it means the act of foreordaining to an earthly lot or eternal destiny by defined decree. Also, the state of being so foreordained, foredestined, foreordained, predetermined. That's just the meaning of the word. So if God never predetermined anything, that'd be an incorrect word to put in the Bible. Right. In any language. Yeah. To decide beforehand. Having. This is having... This took place before giving us all things, uh, putting all, th all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Uh, yeah. Before that, yeah. before He chose us in Christ Jesus, before that, this determination was made. Now, I don't know how you could get possibly get prescience out of that. Yeah. Prescience is you saw it ahead of time and said, ah, oh, there's what he's going to do, so I'm going to choose him because he's going to do that. That is one of the most ignorant and stupid views that I ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. That God made an eternal choice on the base of what he saw men would do. Men who vacillate, change their mind, backslide, fall away, He's going to make any choice on that basis? I tell you, you got to really, you have to be a basically ignorant person to think like that. That's the one part of man, his choice is the one part of man you cannot trust. Everybody knows it. Why would you throw that into theology? God saw what they, well, the person, well, God saw what they'd finally do. Oh, that. So he sifts out what they finally would do. And how did they arrive at the place where they finally did it? That's right. They don't have any much to say about that. Having predestinated. But this work reflects the meaning of pre. Destinate or predetermine or preordain. Yeah. 
something that was from before they were saints. This happened before they were saints, before they were called, before they were chosen, before all that. This happened. Before they were faithful. Yeah. Ephesians 1.1 1, 1 said they're faithful. Before they were blessed with all spiritual blessings. This verse is an explanation of what took place before they were chosen. And it was bef before the determination was made that they should be holy and without blame before him in love. It was before that too. Before the world was created. Before mankind was created. There was a de divine determination that was already in place. Now a person may say, but that's hard to believe. Does God violate free will? And Well, we're raising the questions, not raising the Bible. You'll have to figure that one out yourself. Don't ask someone else to figure out if that's against your free will when God never said squat about your free will when it comes to salvation. Yes. So how in the world are you going to answer a question like that? This is something God, about God that must be known. He predestinated us. He predestinated. He didn't predestinate something. He predestinated us Amen. as people. Mm -hmm. That's what it said now. It Having predestinated us. Mm -hmm. So he's not talking about predestinated a plan. He predestinated us. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. Having predestinated us. When it comes to salvation... God is basically motivated by himself. Yes. Amen. Of course, this is taught very consistently in Scripture. Not by what man does. What man does doesn't motivate God. It's what God determines. Before God embarks on a work... Go ahead. Technically, you could say that the opposite way. It's what man does is motivated by God. That's right. Exactly right. <laughs> The whole lot is cast into the lap, yes. but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Amen. He first purposes what he will do and how he will do it. This is how God works. This is how you work. That's right. Of course, that's only because you're in the image of God. That's part of the divine imagery. You determine what you're going to do before you do it. Some people operate what we call ad hoc, just a jerk, knee-jerk reaction, but... They're not noted for really accomplishing very much. If it is countered that God will bless us because we walk as dear children and walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, there is something more to remember. Such a walk moves us to be, be the kind of people he has previously determined to bless. He's told you the kind of people he chose. Humble, unkind, of spirit, person who trembles at my word. So he's told you. That, that's, that evidence is who he chose. God has declared, surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. So what God does is preceded by what he purposes. Amen. Boley announces, I have purposed it, I will also do it. And again, I have purposed it, and I will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. Jeremiah 4.28 the particular point here is not the specifics of what God has purposed, but the fact that he does purpose and act in strict accord with his purpose. Now this is particularly true in matters pertaining to salvation. Now I ought to precede these words by this. God has not divulged everything on this subject. He only has divulged enough so you'll know this is how God operates. But he doesn't, he hasn't gone into a lot of details about it. You're going to have to wait to find out some of the particulars. But in the meantime, you've got to believe this is what God did. Yeah, amen. Having predestinated us. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> All of this reveals the absurdity of tailoring a, tailoring a religion to the desires of men. This shows how absurd that is. <laughs> God tailors his salvation according to his desires. If men don't want it, they don't get it. That's the way it is. If they do want it, then God will make a way for them to get it. If he's got to send someone out to a desert road to accost someone riding in a chariot, he'll do it. But if a person uh, wants it, God has purposed such a person will get it. That's the way God is. Otherwise, they wouldn't get it. How would, you, how would you like the salvation to be up to the caprice of men or Satan? He predestinated us. The saved ones are the ones who were predestinated, foreordained, marked out, and chosen. He does not say God predestinated the means through which they would be saved, although he did, but that's not what he says here. That he predestinated us, those who are in Christ. He's informing us why we're here. Yeah, that's right. He's telling us why we're here. We're not here because we subscribe to this plan or that plan or we linked up with this person or that person. He's going down to the root cause. You're here because God wanted you. And if he didn't want you, there's no way you'd have got in. Amen. And there wasn't anything in you that would want make him want you. That's right. Yes. This makes for great confidence because your faith cannot be rooted in something that fluctuates. That's right. You know, as much as, uh, as we would that we were perfectly consistent, you don't know what you face in a day. Yeah. Maybe you'll have an evil day. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all kinds of things that create fluctuation, but... This purpose does not Amen. rise or fall Amen. on the basis of what they do or don't do. And see, that's how could God show forth His faithfulness in any other way except in something He has purposed only in Himself Amen. and the resources which only He supplies. Amen. 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 So again, this is language for faith. Yeah. This is not for the intellect yes. alone. Uh -huh. Your intellect has got to take it in, but He's not going to present it in like a logical earthly logical manner and explain what motivated him and all this sort of thing from an earthly point of view. You're going to have to accept now what he says mm -hmm. about it. We are to know and comprehend mm -hmm. that our involvement in salvation was according to divine determination. That's how we're to think about it. You say, well, it's hard for me to... I'd rather think of because I was baptized. Or because I heard, or no, now listen, this is what God has asked us to do. Yes. He knows that we're not able to explain this intellectually to, to a casual observer. Because mm -hmm. God hasn't explained it on that basis. Mm -hmm. He has just said, This, I'm running this show. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that makes the decisions. Yes. I made the decision who'd have the spiritual blessings, and I made the decision where they were going to be, and I made the decision who I was going to choose. Mm -hmm. And I didn't tell anybody who it was. Yeah. The only way you know is to be one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until then, you just speculate about it. That's all you get the best you can do. He predestinated us, He foreordained us, mm -hmm. marked us out. Beforehand, remember there, the prophet told about destruction that was going to be wrought in Ezekiel, I believe, in Jerusalem. He said, Boy, before you start, set a mark on the people. Mm -hmm. They sigh and cry because of the abominations. Who, who decided? God is the one who decided. He put that mark on those people. Amen. Yeah, Brother Gunnar, that in this context, you, the, the word without faith, it's impossible to please That's God. That's right. This is this is exactly the root. That's of, right. This is this is what you believe. That's right. When Saul of Tarsus confronted Jesus on the road to Damascus, mm -hmm. he didn't go back and tell the saints in Damascus how he chose Christ. That's right. In fact, when he wrote when he wrote to the Philippians, he didn't write to them about how he chose Christ. He said, "He apprehended me." Yes, amen. Why did he apprehend Saul? Because he saw what Saul was going to do. Well, what Saul was going to do is persecute the church. 
because he had set his eye on him before the foundation of the world. Amen. Unless he wasn't foreordained on the road to Damascus. That's he right. Was Amen. From the womb. Amen. 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 <laughs> so how we how do we comprehend our involvement in salvation? We look at it through the filter of God's activity. That's what makes for confidence, see. Yes. If you're honest with yourself, you know that if God didn't make the first move, there had never been one. Yes. Amen. You would know that. If you're honest with yourself, you'll be able to say, I am what I am by the grace of God. And God's telling you. Mm -hmm. I made a choice. I'm not going to explain all the ins and outs. It's probably too deep for us in the first place right now. Here in Romans 8.30, he goes over this very thing. He says, "Who, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So the calling come after the predestination. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So he's going to carry out his predetermination. It's going to be carried out. Uh, he's, Paul sees no danger in teaching people about this. Yeah. Thinking they're going to come up with the wrong conclusion. They're going to think they can be lax now. He, he doesn't talk like that. He's clearly said of God, He did predestinate. He also called. He also justified. He also glorified. He said, <laughs> from, that's, from, that's from beginning to end. So who would object to such a grand announcement? Seems to me the only person would be someone that wasn't in. Yes. Yeah. People on the inside, hey, they're glad to hear this. You, you mean, this is how I got in? Yeah. This is how you got in? You mean if I abide in Christ, this outcome is sure? This outcome is sure. If you abide in Christ, this is, a, this is going to happen. Because he was all in Christ. That's why we say if you abide in Christ. Pre, what were we pre predestinated to? Well, we are predestinated unto the adoption of children. Now he states the objective of predestination or divine determination that we might be adopted to be his children. <coughs> Remarkable. Here's how some of the other versions read. To adoption as sons. New King James Version. To be adopted as his sons. NIV. For adoption as his children. New Revised Standard. To be his sons. Revised Standard. For the position of sons. Basic Bible English. To be heirs. Tyndale. To become his own sons, international English, to make us his own children, English Revised Version, to make us his children, Good News Bible, and to be adopted or revealed as his children, Amplified. Now, nearly all versions use the word adoption of the 45 versions that I have. The expression adoption of children. That's a translation of a single word. The meaning of the word is adoption as sons, the consummate condition of the sons of God, which will render it evident that they are the sons of God. That's Thayer's lexicon. Of the sonship status bestowed on those who believe in Christ. That's Freiburg. To formally and legally declare that someone who is not one's own child is henceforth to be treated and declared as one's own child, including complete rights of inheritance to adopt or adoption, as Luanita, an adoption of children only in a transferred sense. That is Gingrich. Now this word accents two things. <laughs> One, we are not the sons of God by nature, even though he created us. Adoption is more a declaration or something put into writing. 
the reality of sonship is confirmed by a show of the evidence within the adopted sons. That is, this, this adoption is confirmed by the appearance of these sons, uh -huh. and the purpose is to make them an heir. It's not just to be like a family member. Yes, amen. Amen. It's to be an heir uh -huh. of God. His heirs are appointed. They've been, pre, they've been picked out ahead of time. Yes. And the only one you know for sure has been picked out, you can know is you. He doesn't, uh, you may by evidence be able to determine some of the others, but the, the important thing is for you to know that you, Amen. you are, he selected his heirs. Well, Abraham selected his heirs. Everyone always selects their heirs. Sometimes it's the firstborn, unless their firstborn is Esau, then <laughs> unless the firstborn is Ishmael, then that's something else. Unless the firstborn is Judah, that's, or Reuben, that's something else. See, it isn't always just the firstborn. But it's determined by the individual doing the choosing. In all of these cases, the revelation of some sonship is the point. The revelation of it is the point, not just the fact that it exists. I can see the wisdom of doing this, that men shouldn't stop speculating about what God does and be firm in their understanding about it, which which will basically revolve around your own relationship to to the Lord. <clears throat> the ultimate showing of this adoption will be at the resurrection of the dead. In fact, the resurrection is referred to as the adoption, yeah. Yeah. to wit, the redemption of our body. Then it will be confirmed. There, these are the one. Yes. These are the one I chose. And there will not be a single person in that group that will say, no, 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 we chose you. Oh, no one will say that. Not on that day. Amen. See, God did it this way because he's showing something of himself. I'll choose these people. They will be handicapped by where they're at. They'll be held back by a fierce adversary that they were powerless to overcome. There'll be nothing in them that recommends them to me. There'll be not one of them will be good. Not one of them will have sought me. See? And he's going to demonstrate that salvation is of the Lord. In fact, here, when it comes down to our participation, John says, As many as received him, Christ, to them gave he power. To become the sons of God, or the right or authority to become the son. There's the adoption, see? The actual, like, we're talking here in this text, is talking about that determination of adoption. John 1 is talking about the experience of adoption. That's right. But you're to know when you choose Christ, you did not choose Him, He chose you. Amen. It is to be understood that this is Jesus Christ and his redemptive or inter and intercessory capacities. This is not Jesus the friend yes. or Jesus the one who solves all your problems or Jesus the helper. He may be involved in those things, but the one inconsistent thing is he's the Savior who redeemed the world. Yes, Brother Jeremy. Predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, and then you have this—it's not a small movement; it's a large, large movement where these handout tracts that says "Make Jesus your Lord." I know. <laughs> you, I mean, to me, it, it just—it's pretty obvious. Yeah. This is the work of the, the devil here, because it's such a large work. It's not just a few people doing this. <laughs> Talking about telling people, well, just say this little prayer and then be on your way. Like, this is something you're doing. But then we have here, this is predestinated. Amen. The Lord's work. It's not ours. I mean, this is, it just is, uh, it just, uh, to me, I just look, thinking about how the devil is doing. He's, he's at work here with these people that, telling people that, this is something you're doing. When here we see this is something that the Lord's doing. 
Now, there, there are denominations that preach this very strongly. One with which I'm personally familiar are the Primitive Baptists, also called Hardshell Baptists. Back in the early 60s, through my writings, one of their leaders thought I was a Primitive Baptist, so they brought a delegation to meet me talk about these things. Now here's the difference between them and my own self. They would preach this to everybody, to the world, everybody. They say, you can't do anything, God does it, and this is how they preach it to the sinners. But this is not preached to sinners. Nowhere in all the Bible is this preached to sinners. Right. Uh -huh. And this is not preached to unstable believers. Uh -huh. This is preached to people that know where they're at, they have a grasp of the truth. They have demonstrated faith in Christ. Why? Because, see, this is very confusing mm -hmm. to anybody else. Yeah. This should not be taught to other people. Mm -hmm. People that are not in Christ or people that are infantile in their faith, you don't go talking to them about predestination. Mm -hmm. The apostles didn't do it. Right. Yeah. They didn't talk about this to this, these kind of people at all. But to those who were in, it was important they know why they were in. Yes, amen. That they were in because of God, uh -huh. therefore they can stay in because of God. Amen. See, admittedly, you are told to engage yourself and to fight the good fight of faith and so forth. But see, it's all founded on your faith in God amen. who made the choice. May a source of glory and edification. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <coughs> now, <coughs> but is it predestined us unto or in order to the adoption of sons was God's very particular here by Jesus Christ See, so the way the person has to be linked up to Christ who is the only begotten son of the father so see this is very particular he, he made the choice but in implementing the choice he didn't do it independently of a go-between he did it by Jesus Christ, which means that's, that dissolves the mystery. Mm -hmm. this, me, this means that it, there's no need to despair thinking, did he choose me? Maybe he didn't choose me. See, in the 1800s, the early 1800s, people were going to insane asylums because they were afraid that they, that they wanted God, but they hadn't been chosen. They actually went crazy. And then the, some, some of the reformers arose to dispel that view and liberate the people. They thought God made the choice and if they had excluded them, they probably even though they wanted desperately to wanted to be part of, of it, they, they probably were excluded. So he, when he says, by Jesus Christ, that puts it in your reach now. Because Jesus is identified with us as well as with God. He, he became one of us. He that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. That's right. Amen. And it's a technical point, but it's more than a technical point. That's what makes the thing obtainable Amen. to you by Jesus Christ. Yes. I know it could be real discouraging if you would teach that was an arbitrary choice. Like it was like a roll of the dice or an eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Okay, I picked you, and no matter what happens, I picked you, and you're just going to get in because I picked you. But uh, when you see that the Lord's working something, though, it's like the reason you come, the reason you believe, yeah. the reason you endure is all traced back to him you see it like beginning to end it's not like all right you're picked now you're on your own think of it this way he says whom he predestinated them he also called mm -hmm. all right now in your heart you feel this compulsion to come to god you you want to grow you want to advance what is that yeah. it's a call Amen. it's a call brethren that's what that is that's God calling you, which is your evidence that you're involved in the predestination. Amen. Yeah. Like in the old time, old, under the old covenant, the Lord uh, said that the people thought that He was like one of them, yeah. like a man. <laughs> yeah. And so then their their idea of Him was was skewed and was obviously inaccurate. And I think that that's a present that exists presently among us too. Is that People who have a problem with God doing the choosing, they're thinking of God as being a man. Yeah, as amen. As if He could make uh, choices and error, make a make something 
to make a decision that, that isn't right and infringe upon man's will. Amen. That's a glorious truth to say now that <laughs> us and Jesus Christ is in the same sentence. That's right. Now, all things are of God's and all things <coughs> are, of our, are of ours. It's because of the us and Jesus Christ. That's right. I mean, everything that God has to offer, and that's glorious truth to see. Everything that God has to offer is ours now because of Jesus Christ. That's how potent this God is, how powerful in carrying out his choice. Mm -hmm. Who would ever have thought of an arrangement like this? Mm -hmm. That you take a member of the Godhead, yes. humble himself and come down into earth be identified so he can sympathize with the human condition, yes. and then bring the people through Christ yes. to God. See, it's ingenious. Now the angels, now they're, they're particular in ministering to those who shall be heirs. That's right. So they take their work very serious. Yeah, they, so they must know who they yes. are. God had an inheritance he That's wanted right. to give, and he Amen. could give it. He only could give it to heirs. That's right. That's heirs right. Heirs of righteousness. Amen. Could it had to be a family member. Couldn't be an angel because they're not part of the family. That's right. See, Amen. <laughs> so he had to have a household. Mm -hmm. So the predestination had to do with the hump, who was going to be in the household, and then Jesus Christ was the means mm -hmm. to which this thing would be. Carried on adoptive children by Jesus Christ to Himself. The coming to Jesus is not the conclusion of the matter. Hmm? Amen. Judas came to Jesus. Not the conclusion of the matter. Jesus then brings you to God. That's that's the objective is get to God. To Himself. That's the objective. Once you realize that, how could this be de determined by human choice? I mean, how much do you really know about God? Or how to get to Him, or anything like associated with that? See, this is why this, this whole economy of salvation would have been impossible if God didn't make the determination. Nobody would have got in. But the process of being reconciled to God involves Jesus Christ and the becoming a son that's why you're reconciled to God is so you can be an heir mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what it's all about Amen. Yeah. and it's by Jesus Christ we're reconciled to God and we live unto God mm -hmm. by Jesus Christ we have fruit unto God I'm sure it's to himself commenting now on to himself yeah. We are fruit unto God. Our bodies are presented unto God. We will give an account of ourselves to God. When we are converted, we turn to God. We give attention to showing ourselves approved unto God. The new covenant enables us to draw nigh unto God. We come unto God by Jesus Christ. Our aim is to be acceptable to God by Jesus. See, see, that's the aim by Jesus Christ. That's the aim of all of this. Amen. Is us and God. That's the objective. That's why Jesus is in there. To bring us to God and present us Amen. to God and to turn the kingdom over to God. Amen. That's the objective. Yeah. I was thinking about this angels uh, that Brother Bob said and I just could see like the angels entering into this work this ministry, it, it just comes more clear now that, that they're so joyful to enter into this ministry of helping the saints because they see what God is doing in That's this. Right. You know, they witnessed all these things that God's doing, so mm -hmm. so this is what they get to do Amen. in salvation, so they mm -hmm. get to participate in salvation. If anyone got a list, it probably is them. That's right. <laughs> The man who had the ink horn, yeah. they knew who to mark. Yeah. Who was it? Those who sighed and cried yeah. for the nomination. Amen. Well, there was evidence there, right? It was, yeah, they, then there was evidence. But then this is what we're talking about here. Yeah. God predetermining, there wasn't any evidence yet. So for them to minister to those who shall be. Shall be that's right. <laughs> yeah. So they had to have some information from the Father on that. Yeah. And then the point of... The point of 
being predestined unto adoption is adoption not only is unto an inheritance, the adoption has evidence. The yeah. adoption is yeah. evidenced, and that's what you're talking about. Yeah. The adoption is evidenced. Mm -hmm. Any person who's been adopted has some evidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some divine traits are yes. found Amen. found in them. And if they, if they aren't, mm -hmm. well, they better they better pursue that because yes. that's a dangerous uh -huh. dangerous position. Not to have the traits of the family. Mm -hmm. These things are <coughs> more like fruit unto God and bring us unto God. These are more than requirements, <coughs> though they're, they're really that too. Mm -hmm. They reflect the purpose of God. The purpose of God was to extract a people yes. out of a hodgepodge of sinners mm -hmm. and bring them to himself and make them his heirs who on their own had absolutely no qualifications and were part of a total mass that had been dominated by the devil. And it, 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 we were without God and without hope in the world. To, for out of that mass of contamination, he chose the people Amen. Amen. that rose above mm -hmm. the others because Amen. God chose them. Yeah. Now in the end, this will all be crystal clear. Yes. When everyone, st everyone stands before the throne of God, everybody's going to know. Salvation belongs to God. Amen. We're here because of what He ch determined and did. Yes. I know we're not talking about this particular aspect yeah. of this, but what's glorious, when you said I was talking about the glorious aspect that now God has given a message by which to those people would That's know. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> they're going to be out. They're going to be. They're going to be chosen and called through a message. Yeah. That's they're right. They're going to hear a That's message. That's right. Mm -hmm. That'll help them will to, hear. To, to yeah. determine. And once you determine in your soul, once this all dawns on your soul, I'm one of them. Yes. Boy, I tell you, it makes a significant difference how you live and the yes. confidence you have. It, it puts meat into the thing. Until you know this, you're like hobbling. Yeah. And at some point, some of us hobbled for a long time before finally it dawned on us. We were able to connect the desires of our heart and where we wanted to go. We were able to connect that with what God said he'd do. Yes. My people will be willing in the day of my power. Yes. So if you are willing, yeah. divine power. Amen. Adopted unto himself, or by Jesus Christ, to himself, According to the good pleasure of his will. See how he nails this thing? <laughs> it's like he's closing up a box, nailing it, nailing the lid down here. So you know it's all of God. Oh, it's all of God. All things are of God. Why did the Lord predestinate us to adopt the children to himself? What's the root cause of this gracious choice? <laughs> it was according to the good pleasure of his will. In other words, because he wanted to. Yeah. That's what it boils down to. Do you really want anything further than that? And to be sure, if the Lord does not do anything, he doesn't, he doesn't want. want. That's right. You know, it, it is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I know why Satan tried to hide this from myself and has hidden it from multitudes of people. Because once you know, once you're out of this mode, does he want me? Does he not want me? Am I fit or am I not fit? Have I done enough or have I not done enough? And you're in that mode that some of us were in. I was in it. And it suddenly dawns on you, God has done all things well. He looked at the new creation the same way he looked at the first creation. Very good. Amen. Very good. And when you realize God wanted you, that's why he called you, then you're more prone to come, <laughs> to come to him, see? It all makes perfect sense. Yes? We've all had this experience. Now, this is just a small type. You've done something for somebody, not because you had to, but because you really wanted to, and then they say, well, you didn't have to do that. Well, you already knew that. Yeah. But you wanted to. That's it was right. your heart. It was in your heart to do that's it. That's right. Yeah. And this is what it is with God. That's how great God is. Mm -hmm. Now, this is kind of a high view, but it is a necessary one. God wanted a people 
so bad he was willing to endure all the heartache and hardship and sorrow and grief involved in tolerating this race for a long period of time, taking them out, enduring while they grew, being patient and long-suffering. That's how bad he wanted this done. That's right. He waited yeah. while they blasphemed his name yes. generation after generation. Yes. See, there was a, th a thousand reasons why he could have just destroyed the whole race. That's right. But he desired, when God desires something, it's different than man desired. Mm -hmm. He's going to carry it out. It's called the determinate counsel of his will. <clears throat> his good pleasure. Some versions say he was agreeable to. It gave him pleasure. It would please God. It was a happy choice. You being saved... I know people say the angels rejoice. This is true. He, he says there's more joy in heaven, what he said. There's more joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. But see, God rejoices too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this pleases God too. Mm -hmm. Not just angels. Yes. Not just fellow believers. Mm -hmm. this, I will do all my pleasure. All my pleasure. Amen. Jesus told his disciples. It's the Father's good pleasure Amen. Yeah. to give you the kingdom. Yes. Give the give us the kingdom? We're talking about a kingdom going to fill the whole earth. Yeah. Give us the kingdom? Yeah, that's what God wants to do. Yeah. What are you doing asking for cars and houses? Yeah. Right. Well, he wants to give you the kingdom. Yeah. It's what he wants, and that's what he's going to do, because what God wants, he carries out. Amen. The angel saw that the, to the, yes. the time came <laughs> when the saints possessed the kingdom. Yeah. The greatness of it under the whole heaven is given to them. David was so confident of God's, of this kind of doing, he said, Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Mm -hmm. We know if you do what you want to Zion, they'll be blessed. Do it. Well, you can pray this for people. Lord, do your good pleasure. Do your good pleasure to them. Do what you want for them. Do it to them. And he works in us both the will and do of his own good pleasure. Not he works will and do of according to your good pleasure, according to his good pleasure. His good pleasure. See, those who question the reality of God's predestination question what God pleases. Yes. Mm -hmm. What pleases Him. He predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. Mm -hmm. This is very pleasing to Him. How do you suppose He looks upon a person who says this is not pleasing to them? Mm -hmm. We don't like that kind of doctrine. We don't like to hear that. We don't think that's right. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't, I would suggest that you abandon that position forthwith. Yeah. The good pleasure of his will. His will is what pleases him. Yeah. <clears throat> According to the good pleasure of his will or his purpose, he freely chose to do this. So there's an example of real free will. Mm -hmm. God's free will. When holy men prayed for believers, they'd pray like this. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ. There it is. He nails it down again. Amen. It's his will carried out through Christ Jesus. So that's what you want. That's, quote, the will of God for your life. Here it is. To work His good pleasure in you. That's it. That's what He wants. In this text, we come to the loftiest of all redemptive benefits. The adoption of sons in order to the realization of His inheritance. Now we're at the top of the heap. When we're there, does Paul here admonish the Ephesians to do this or that in order to benefit, in order that this benefit might be realized? He tells them what God did. 
what he's appealing to their faith, brethren. Yes. Amen. Only faith can get hold of this. You can't take hold of this any other way than to simply believe it. Yes. And when you do, faith is like unites you to God. So now the power flows to do what needs to be done and to do it gladly yes. with great joy in your heart. It's true that Jesus sometimes asked people, what do you want? Did it at least two times. But that wasn't common. He didn't ask everybody, what do you want? But people that confronted Jesus, they would say, what do you want? Like Saul said, what do you want me to do? Right. See? <laughs> he knew, he knew who was doing the calling. He knew it. That God had broke through that day. He saw it and said, what do you want me to do? And what God told him to do was what he wanted Paul to do. He said, I'll tell you what I've appointed you to do, Paul. To open men's eyes, turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that he might receive the inheritance. That's what I want you to do. Paul said, I believe it. So he empowered him to do it. Amen. And many of us can trace our own yes. advancement to what Paul has taught. Mm -hmm. Well, that is uh, an introduction, at least, to that text. God's will, we are taught, is always good and acceptable and perfect. Good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. Here is will of God, the will of God, desire of God, moved him to make a, to purpose something. Yeah. He purposed, I'm going to adopt some sons. I'm going to do it through Christ, so I give them an inheritance. Now I'm going to predestinate who participates in this. In the end, it's good. we're going to see it was very righteous. What he did was very righteous. And we'll find that no one will be able to make their boast except in the Lord. When it's all, all the information is turned in. Until now, we'll have to really accept this by faith. Uh -huh. We don't have all the answers that uh -huh. people might ask, questions they might ask about this issue, but we believe it. Amen. And once we, once we settle it in our heart that what God did was right, it makes more and more sense to us. <laughs> And the more sense it makes to us, the more sense it makes to live for him, and the more sense it makes to resist the devil and flee temptation. It all makes perfect sense. Amen. Yeah. So God be thanked for this wonderful text in the Scripture. Any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? Given the, um, the fall of, independent from this truth, the fall of man is unreasonable. <laughs> right. you see you see that in the context of what God's doing the fall of man was necessary in order that he might adopt some that were totally they, they couldn't help themselves That's right. they were fallen That's and yet right. he had this plan before he had the, before the fall I That's mean, right. It, it had to make sense so. yes yeah. sister Barb it's just reasonable that the Lord has the choice because he is over all he's all powerful mm -hmm. I was thinking about a vague shadow with Esther whenever she was chosen by the king. Mm -hmm. It was the choice of the king that made her queen. But even after she was made queen, she was his wife. She didn't dare go before him unless he chose her. That's right. That was the issue that she had. With yes, her amen. It all came down to the choice of the king, even with that intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Tony, you had something? Yes, sir. I was, you got this sentence here. It was his own glory he was seeking, not merely <laughs> our own betterment. And uh, seeing God glorified and known is going to be our greatest happiness. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. That's, that's what's going to bless us the most because it wouldn't be right for it to be centered in us. That's right. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be right mm -hmm. because God, God is the greatest. God has done it all. And it, it would, and, and 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 seeing him uh, promoted and seeing him glorified, and that's 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 going to bring us 
uh, our greatest happiness and glory. Amen. This is too big for us to contain anyway. Yeah. That's right. Another way of saying all of these things is what Paul says there in Romans 11, from him and to, to him, him, to him. To him are all things. That's right. Mm -hmm. the glory forever Amen. and ever. That's right. And it, the, final, the final sealing of this truth to us will be when Jesus delivers the kingdom yeah. back to God. Uh -huh. And he himself is subject to the Father. Yes. That's the price for our redemption. Amen. Amen. That's right. We'll never forget it. Yes. We'll never forget it, brethren. Mm -hmm. That's the price of our salvation. Yes. And Jesus paid it mm -hmm. because God determined it. Yes. Yeah. In the end, God's determination is the only one that will not be frustrated. That's right. Every day we see people giving themselves to things that they're going to ultimately be frustrated in. Mm -hmm. Whether it's stuff or trying to extend their life or trying mm -hmm. to create a good family or trying to do all these things over which they really have no control. But now, here's something you can give yourself to where the outcome is absolutely certain. Amen. 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 <coughs> Another mic? The reason people have a hard time with this is because they're not able to relinquish man as the center of everything. Yeah. That's right. They, they, they think that it'll bring more glory to God if, if I see how good God is and if I see how much God loves me and then I choose Him. But that's, that's not true. That, that just gives man the glory. What gives God the glory is His choosing of us before the foundation of the world, not based on anything that we've done, but on His own good pleasure. Hmm. And that's an, another difficult thing that people have with this, again, has to do with keeping ourselves at the center of salvation. And people want to know <coughs> why or how God chooses. Yeah. Because I know it has to do something with me. Yeah. I know I, I there's something about me that makes God right. choose me, and I want to hear all about what I am or what I've done. Yeah. But that that's to to grasp this truth, you, a person has got to put themselves aside yeah. and seek God's glory. Amen. And that's the way it's going to be in the end. Where, mm -hmm. as you've been saying, he he chose us just of his own good pleasure and that that gives him the glory mm -hmm. that, that he chose us in the condition that we were in or even before that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah we saved us in spite of what we were <laughs> all right we'll have a word of prayer our dear heavenly father how grateful we are for this revelation we're content with what you have told us thus far but we do frankly anticipate when you will make these things clearer and we'll be able to see thee more clearly and praise thee to a greater extent. In Jesus' name, amen.